Go. Cool. Um, well, so we're going to do a workshop on no mess rollouts with API Gateway. So if you're interested in Argo and uh, API Gateway, you're in the right place. Um, I'm Nina. Uh, I work at Solo as a software engineer. Um, we do primarily Istio and uh, our API, uh, our gate Envoy based API gateway. So I've been on kind of both teams, so very familiar with Istio and Envoy. Um, Lawrence, I'm Lawrence. Here. Yeah, I'm Lawrence. Uh, I also work at Solo, working on the same things as well. Cool. Well, so before uh, like we get into more slides, um, our lab takes a while to boot up, um, and this is like a hands-on workshop. So if you don't have a laptop, find a buddy, uh, scan the QR code, or, or go to the link. Um, and this is all in instruct, so you don't have to run anything locally. It's you know, in the, like the internet should be okay since it's running on, on their VMs. Um, so yeah, so scan the QR code. It'll take a couple minutes maybe to boot up. Um, so if you start now, we'll like have the slide throughout the presentation. So if you come late and need to scan, like it'll, it'll return. Um, but if you wanna do that now and get started, that'd be great. Um, and uh, the next thing we're gonna do is actually take um, some warm-up questions. So um, the first warm-up question is, uh, if you are using a gateway controller, which one are you using? Are you using you know, AWS, um, Istio, um, what other? Yeah. <laughs> Cilium, Cilium, Glue, Kong, Kong Glue, yeah. uh, Envoy Gateway. Um, so yeah, the, but yeah, if you slide, if you, or if you swipe, yeah, there you go. So, some answers for AWS, yep. some answers for Istio, more Istio, Nginx, we'll actually see that maybe later. Envoy Gateway, we'll also see that. Cool. Ambassador. Very good. More AWS. AWS. Yeah, a good number of Nginx too, which is good. This is one of our examples uh, might might use that. So, All right. give people another couple seconds to, to keep typing. Pretty good. Yeah, I think Pretty Nginx might be the winner. Yeah. All right. Well, um, all good answers. Um, we have another question too. So if you finish typing, I'll move on to the second question. Um, so my second question is: How familiar are you with progressive delivery techniques? So this is mostly to help us, like you know, speed the, uh, like, you know, understand what speed to go at um, in the early sections, because we're gonna assume, um, like, no knowledge um, of Argo rollouts to begin with, and kind of introduce it gradually. Um, so yeah, so somewhat familiar, good to hear. Great. So it seems like people have some familiarity with like what Argo is or what progressive delivery is. Um, so with that, I'm gonna put up the, the lab link again. If you have a chance, uh, again, scan the QR code or, or go to the, the tiny URL, um, and that should bring up the instruct page. Um, I'll be walking around to help people like loading up instruct and uh, you know any issues you run into, and I think Lawrence is gonna take the first section. So progressive delivery. Yep, thank you. Um, and also, when you pull up the lab, make sure to click the start button in the bottom right, uh, so that, that that actually will kick off the the VM start. So that that way you can get it going while we go through some quick slides. Um, okay, so kind of the whole premise here we've touched on is progressive delivery, and progressive delivery is a software delivery technique where your your goal is to gradually introduce new versions of software to your users but you do it in a gradual fashion and in a controlled fashion. So whether that's uh, some subset of users or a specific environment, the goal is that you reduce the blast radius and the risk that comes with making a change. So ideally, you have that coupled with some automation, so you spin up a new version and you gradually send some traffic to that new version. Um, if things go wrong, you can catch that and roll back as quickly as you can before you have 
you know, full production outage. Um, but to get to progressive delivery, we have to start at the basic level. So Kubernetes deployments is kind of the, the standard way to do this in the Kubernetes world. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a resource that's provided as the def with default Kubernetes. It's in the apps API group, and it's kind of you know, the standard way of managing your workloads in Kubernetes. It's not the only one. Um, for example, OpenShift had a deployment config, um, but for the most part, deployments is how you get your applications deployed. Um, there's two basic strategies that come with a deployment for rolling out upgrades. One is recreate, uh, and one is rolling update. Recreate, I actually haven't seen too much usage in the, in, in the wild. Um, basically, that kills all of your existing pods and spins up a whole new set of pods every time you do a deployment. Um, whereas a rolling update does a gradual rollout where you spin up a new pod according to some ratio, and then you spin down the old pods. Um, under the covers, the deployments work by creating another Kubernetes resource, the replica set. So you create a deployment and you say, I want to create some pods of this specification with this amount of replicas. And then under the covers, the deployment is going to create a replica set that, that um, defines that single, that single revision of your deployment. And then ultimately, that replica set will then turn into however many pods you need. And those will get scheduled and your workload is actually running. Um, so at a super basic level, Right, you have your deployment created. You have a deployment controller in the control plane, in the Kubernetes control plane that's watching for that. So it sees that there's a deployment, and we want to create revision one. So now we're going to spin up a replica set, and then the replica set controller is watching for replica sets, and it says, "Okay, I need to create revision one." Spin up a bunch of pods. So with that, now let's actually go to our lab, and we're going to get our hands dirty with the deployments. So you should be at a screen, hopefully, that says using Kubernetes deployments. Um, if not, raise your hand, and Nina will help you get there. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. OK. Um, so with the lab, so actually, let's go to the first step, and we can kind of talk about instruct. Um, so this is the UI of the actual lab itself. On the left is the terminal where you actually be putting in commands to interact with the VM that's provisioned. Um, behind the scenes, in Instruct, everyone that has signed up and is using this, you have your own VM in the cloud, um, and so you can interact with it directly. Uh, on the right are the directions. The text is actually pretty self-contained, so if you want to just read along yourself and do the lab, you can do that as well. I'll be going through it up here and going through it and kind of summarizing the text. I don't want to you know, read it word for word. Um, so you can just watch as I do it as well. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're talking about Kubernetes deployments and how they work. Um, the first thing we're going to do is actually go ahead and create a deployment. Um, the VMs that are running have a kind cluster provisioned uh, that we can interact with using kubectl. Um, right now, there's nothing on the cluster. We can go ahead and kind of prove that. We'll do a kubectl get all. Um, you can copy and paste if you want with uh, these little buttons ab above the kind of the text blocks. So you can copy and paste if you wanted to. Um, what you can also do is click the run button, which will just directly run it for you, so you don't have to copy and paste every command. Um, so in this case, though, we just did a kubectl get all, and we can see that at least in the default namespace, the only thing running is the default, or the only thing there is the default Kubernetes service. Um, so as we go through all of these steps, we're going to be using this Argo Rollouts demo app, um, which is a pretty awesome little tool that will help us visualize um, how rollouts progress. So this is a screenshot. We'll be working with this directly in some of the later labs. But uh, basically what it does is it, it's a front end. It's a UI that also has a back end, and the back end has a slash color endpoint. And so the, the squares in the app will randomly make a request to slash color and depending on the response from that, from the, depending on the color that it gets as a response, will color in with the color that it got. So in this case, you can see that there's a majority blue, and then it's you know, in, the, in, in the process of doing a rollout to yellow. And it kind of helps you see, as time progresses of the deployment, the various um, shift in versions. Um, so for, uh, going back to the lab, for the, first, for the first lab, we're not actually going to use that app from like a UI perspective. But that's the app that we'll be using throughout the whole workshop. So we're going to go ahead and create a deployment that represents that application that we were just looking at. 
And the first thing we'll do is just take a quick peek at the manifest itself. So we've got kind of a standard um, deployment manifest here, and that is, um, you know, apps v1 deployment, as basic as it gets. And we have a pretty simple setup here. Um, we want 10 replicas of our rollouts demo app, and we're using here this rollouts demo blue version. The tag is blue. That corresponds to the color that we saw on the UI. So basically, every time that the request went to this version of the back end, it would respond with blue, resulting in a blue square. Um, and down at the bottom, you can see the strategy of the deployment. In this case, we're using the rolling update, and then we have just a couple of configuration options on the rolling update, which is the max surge and max unavailable. We're not gonna go into too many details of that, but basically, you do have a bit of control over how you want the, the rollout to progress when you make a change to the deployment. Um, let's go ahead and actually apply it and see it run. So we've, we've applied the manifest to our cluster, and then we can do a get all, and we're gonna include the labels while we do that. So what we'll see is at the top, we'll see a bunch of pods spinning up. Some of them are already running. Some of them are still in the creating phase, but we should have 10 of these pods that correspond to at the bottom, we have a replica set that wants 10 pods. And this replica set, again, was created by the deployment. So we applied the deployment. The deployment controller saw that and realized that we want to kick in a replica set or create a replica set in order to spin up our actual pods. Um, the other interesting thing that we'll talk about with this is you can see that the replica set has a suffix uh, of these characters. This is, the hash, um, this is the hash of the pod template that we put in our deployment. And so this hash is also present on the labels of the replica set that has a pod template hash of that, that, that string. The pods themselves also have a label that's pod template hash of that hash. And that's how the, the pods and the replica set stay in sync, and the deployment tracks its revisions based off of the hash of the replica set as well. So we have our pods running. We have 10 of them. Our initial deployment is, is running great. Now we need to update it, so we make a change to our app. In our case, we're gonna change the, the color of the application. And the way we'll do that, I'm gonna copy this one so we can see it kind of full. What we're doing is we're going to Check. I think we're back. Okay. All right. So we just had a canary deployment of our, of our microphone. Um, okay. So where are we at? We are going to update this deployment to actually do a rollout of this deployment. And so this, you know, again, we're going to use the kubectl set command to actually update the deployment. In this case, we're gonna set the image on the pod spec of this deployment to what it previously was of blue. We're gonna set it to the rollouts demo with an orange version. Um, and then we're going to, immediately after that, one, run the kubectl rollout status command uh, with the dash dash watch flag so we can actually see it progress as it progresses. So let's go ahead and roll that, run that. And so what we've done is we've changed the deployment spec or the pod spec of the deployment by changing the version of that image, and that signaled to the deployment controller that's watching the deployment that something has changed. I need to spin up a new version. I'm going to roll out all these new pods, and now I have my new set of pods deployed, um, and we can see that you know, it progressed from one to 10, basically, of those replicas. 
So what we can do is now let's check what we have running. So now we have the 10 pods that are created you know, about 20 seconds ago to correspond to our update. And then we have um, the same deployment, but at the bottom now we have two replica sets, one which is scaled to zero and one which is scaled to 10. So the, the new replica set that corresponds to the new version of our app is now running according to this replica set with a new hash, and you can see that the hashes also match up as they did before. So let's do another rollout, and this time we're gonna watch on the replica sets because there's a lot more change happening there. Um, so let's go ahead and run this command. To, we're gonna set the image to a different color. In this case, it's gonna be red, and then we're going to watch the replica sets as they progress through their deployment. So you can see that at the beginning, um, I'm, sure, I'm gonna scroll back up. You can see at the beginning that we had this new replica set created zero seconds ago immediately, and we wanted two replicas at that point. Um, we, want, we didn't have two of them ready, so it's still in the process of creating, but then we also see one of the replica sets go down to nine, so that corresponds to the previous one. And so what happens is it will progress through, right, and then we end up with one replica set at 10, and one at zero. And so again, that corresponds to our new version. Okay, so we can check the pods again and see the labels, and we'll now see that we have um, 10 of these pods, and this, this hash corresponds to the new replica set that has the 10 desired. So, okay, that's great, we rolled out a new version. What if something is wrong with this version, and we need to roll back? In our case, um, we have to do it manually because there's nothing in the deployment that helps us automate that unless you build a bunch of custom tooling on top of it. So what we want to do is we, we would ideally like to automate that away, but we get, we're getting reports from you know, our testers or users that something is wrong in this new version. We need to roll back. So with a deployment, what we can do is we can check the history as a certain number of, his, of the historical revisions are kept around. Um, in this case, we'll run the rollout history command, and we can see that there are three revisions. The change cause uh, column is empty. That's cor that corresponds to an annotation on the deployment. We haven't done anything special with that, so it's empty. If you were building some tooling on top of deployments, you could build that into, say, your pipeline to say, you know, as you've, like maybe a hash, if you have it checked into Git, a commit hash that says this commit was applied, that's why this change happened. Um, but we don't have any of that fanciness right now, so we just have an empty change. But what we know is that we want to go back to revision one in this case. The last two versions, reports we're getting, they're, they're not working right, so we need to go back. So let's get a bit more detail on revision one. So we're, we're going to run the command to get the history specifically of revision, revision one, and we're also going to get the replica sets and see what's still in our cluster. So the first command gave us the history of revision one, and that was when we were on the blue version, and we also had this hash associated with that revision. And then when we got the replica sets, we see that we have three of them still in the cluster. The one at the top is at 10, because that represents our current state, but we have these two still around that are at zero, um, because those were the first and second version that we have already um, progressed beyond, but they still exist in the cluster um, in, the case, in case we need to roll back to them. Um, and you can see that this one that was created seven minutes ago has this hash of 745, and that corresponds to revision one um, at stored in the history of our deployment. So, okay, so we, what we wanna do is we wanna roll back to that version. So what we'll do is we'll use the rollout undo command, and in this case we're gonna say we want to go specifically to revision one, and then we're gonna watch as that rollout happens. So now we're gonna scale up from zero to 10 of our new replica set, or actually our old replica set, um, and we scale down the new version, and then we can see what happened by, we're going to check the events on the deployment, and, that case, and that's another way that we can see what has happened with our deployment. Um, and then we'll also get the pods and their labels. So if we scroll back up, we can see that some events happen where we're scaling the replica set, and it kind of tracks you know, what happened um, over the process of that rollback, and then now we have our 10 pods that were created, again, 20 seconds ago that correspond to revision one.
um, and that's the hash that's associated with um, revision one. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up. That's, that's it for deployments. You know, we, we see how they work. We know how they work under the covers. Pretty basic, but you know, it's pretty standard for Kubernetes. As we want to start progressing through these progressive delivery uh, components, we need to build on top of that or we need to look for other options. So we'll go ahead and do the cleanup step, delete our deployment, and then you can click check in the bottom right to go to the next lab. And now we're gonna talk about Argo rollouts. Okay, so we saw what we have available to us with deployments, but again, for a progressive delivery pr pr perspective, there's not a whole lot there. We have to build a bunch of stuff on top of it, or enter Argo rollouts. We can use a tool that's built specifically for this. Uh, Argo rollouts basically gives you Kubernetes native tooling for progressive delivery. Um, Argo rollouts is a subproject of the CNC upgraduated Argo project. Um, and it's worth calling out that Argo rollouts doesn't actually require the use of the other projects like Argo CD. I know there, there, I've personally seen some misconceptions where you have to use Argo CD to use Argo rollouts. There is integration between them, but you, there, it's not required at all. Um, in fact, in this workshop, we're going to use only Argo rollouts and none of the other tooling. Um, so don't let that <laughs> kind of take you away from using it if you think you have to use one or the other, or one and the other. Um, the way that it works is it's basically a Kubernetes controller or kind of a set of controllers that, that also have a set of CRDs that allow you to express some of the progressive delivery concepts that we want um, with, with their own custom resource. Uh, the, core, the core object that we're gonna talk about is the rollout. Um, and you can think of the rollout as basically an enhanced deployment that, that provides some of the base features of the deployment, but additional concepts on top of that. Um, for example, we have some additional deployment strategies. We talked about the recreate strategy in the deployment. We also saw the rolling update in action. Rollouts from Argo rollouts also give you blue-green and canary uh, strategies. Blue-green, we're not gonna talk about as much in this workshop, um, but just know that it, it exists. We're mainly gonna be focusing on canary. And so a canary deployment um, basically comes from the term, you know, the canary in the coal mine, uh, which is a pretty brutal thing that you know, coal miners used to take a canary in a cage down into the coal mines and that would alert them if there were harmful gases because the canary would die and they know that they would have to get out of the mine before they died. Um, in software, it's not as brutal, but the concept is the same where you have a, a component that you're designated to be, this is gonna signal if something is, is wrong. And so, for example, the, in the diagram, you can see that we have a stable app and that's getting 80% of the traffic and then we have a canary app that's getting 20% of the traffic. And again, this goes back to the, the whole thing where you reduce the, the risk or the blast radius, where if something is wrong in your canary, at the most, only 20% of your users are impacted. That's not great, but it's better than 100%. Um, and so we can use Argo rollouts to say, achieve this canary deployment. So at a high level, before we go into the labs, what, what actually happens is we, have, we, we create a rollout object uh, instead of a deployment object. The Argo rollouts controller is what's watching for that. And similar to deployment, ultimately it's gonna create a replica set as well. Um, and then as we saw with the deployment, that is gonna result in some pods being created by the replica set controller. What's different is that we have this stable kind of designation on this replica set. So Argo rollouts is tracking what is stable. On initial creation, stable is immediately applied to the first revision and we scale up all the pods and we're in a healthy state, we're stable. But when we make a change, if we're using a canary, what ends up happening is we now create a new replica set that corresponds to the canary, in this case it's revision two, and revision one still stays around, it's still stable, but we also want to start deploying our canary app so that we can start testing that in addition to keeping the majority of the traffic on the stable. So in our example, let's say we had four pods initially, and our canary is gonna be a 50-50 canary, 50% canary, 50% stable. So in the case of the four pods, we're gonna spin up two new pods, and that's gonna to correspond to revision two, canary. So now we have two pods of revision one, four pods of revision, two pods of revision two, four pods of revision one. But we don't want that, we only want two of stable, so we're gonna spin down two of them. And so we end up in a position where we have our 50-50 split, 
where 50% rolled out canary, 50% rolled out stable. And then we can do testing or whatever to determine whether or not this revision two is healthy and it's good. And it turns out our users love it, so we're ready to go to the next state. We're gonna promote that. And so when we promote it, now revision two becomes stable, revision one gets scaled down, and it's kept around, but we're, we're done with it for now. So now revision two, we're just gonna spin that up to 100%, so we're gonna add two more pods, so we have our full four pods on revision two, and then revision one goes away, and now we're in a position where we have all four pods uh, on canary, on version two, and now that's stable. That's not a canary anymore. It's working great. So let's go ahead and actually see that in action and go back to the labs and do that. Okay, so we're gonna learn about Argo rollouts by actually using it. So the first thing we need to do is install it. Um, we're gonna use the Helm command to do that. Pretty basic, nothing special here, just installing the, roll, the, the default rollouts chart using Helm. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. taking longer than I would like. Okay, and then we'll check what's in the Argo rollouts namespace. We see two pods, Argo rollouts pods. This is, this is the Argo rollouts controller. By default, you're gonna get a couple replicas of it. But this is, this is the brains of Argo rollouts. And so now, similar to the deployment, right, we have to create our object to, to manage all this stuff. In this case, we're gonna create the rollout itself, but before we do that, we'll take a look at the actual manifest. Um, so we have a rollout, the Argo project, uh, V1 Alpha 1 API version, and for, in a lot of ways, it's similar to deployment. At the bottom right, you have a pod template, you have a selector which matches the, the replica set uh, hash to the pods, and so on. Um, and for the most part, it's the same. What's different is the strategy section here. So again, if you remember in the deployment, we, we had just kind of rolling update strategy and a couple of knobs that, that kind of helped with how we want to control that. But with Argo rollouts, we get much more sophisticated tooling. In this case, we're saying we want to do a canary strategy for our rollout, and we define a set of steps that are taken in order to progress through the canary until you can fully promote it to where you know that you're, you're ready to promote what was a canary, now to stable. And so in this example, we have, the first step is we have a set weight to 25. So that's saying 25% goes to the, to the canary. And then we have a pause. In this case, it's an empty pause, which means an indefinite pause. So you need some manual interaction to promote it beyond this pause step. Uh, in, in most real use cases, you probably don't want to use a manual pause, but for things like this, it's great. And maybe there is a case that you want to have manual um, interaction to move beyond your canary while you're still getting used to uh, Argo rollouts and so on. But in our case, it's an indefinite pause. We're gonna have to perform a step manually to promote it beyond that. Then the next step, we go to 50% weight, another indefinite pause, then 75% weight, and then lastly, we pause for 10 seconds before we finish and we're promoting the, the canary now to stable. That's the full completion of the canary. Um, Okay, so nothing too crazy there. Let's go ahead and apply it and we should see it in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. Okay, and then we'll do a get on the rollouts, specific resource, and all to see what else was spun up. So we get the rollout at the top. Similar to the deployment, we have columns of you know, the desired count and the current count and so on. Then we have the pods themselves. They also have the suffix of a hash. And then we have the replica set as well, similarly with that suffix of a hash. And so nothing too different here. Again, on, remember how in the deployment, the initial step, it scaled all the way to the, the full count. Same thing with the rollout. There's no canary done on the initial creation. If we modify this though, then we'll do a canary step, or then we'll kick off our canary and go through the steps that are defined in our uh, canary strategy. So in order to get a little bit more detail on this rollout, 
Um, again, this is a custom resource. We could look at the YAML, but what we really want is a little bit more uh, richer information on the status of this rollout. There is a kubectl plugin uh, that's part of Argo rollouts. Um, we have it downloaded on the VM to save some time. It's available as from their GitHub and so on. Um, but just to kind of prove that it's available, we'll do some commands that show that. So we did a witch on the kubectl Argo rollouts, which is kind of the standard convention for kubectl plugins. We have it in our path, which means that it's available to kubectl. And then we ran the version command on it to kind of show that, yes, it exists and it's working. Um, so what we'll do is we're going to use that. The, so the command that we're going to run is kubectl argo rollouts get rollout and then the rollout name. And so this is using the plugin to give us some rich data on the rollout. So if we run that, we can see something that has a little more context on the rollout specific stuff. So we see that we're healthy. We're using a canary that has six steps. We're currently at 100% weight because we're, we're at the first part. And then we have one revision that has you know, this replica set and these pods associated with it. So now that, we can, now that we can kind of visualize some of the details of the canary, let's go ahead and promote it. Or let's go ahead and make a, a change so that we can see the canary actually kick off. In this case, we're going to use that same plugin to um, set the image, similar to how we did with the deployments. But because kubectl doesn't understand the rollouts uh, resource, we have to use something that understands it, in this case, the rollouts plugin. So if we run this command to set the image, we're going to set that version to yellow, um, and we're going to kick off a canary. So we've updated it, and now we can check the status. What we're going to do is the very simple get the rollout. And now we can see some more interesting stuff. So the status is that it's progressing, and we're still waiting for some replicas to be updated. We have two versions, or two images. We have the stable at blue, and the change that we just made yellow is now a canary. And then when we look at kind of the, the tree view, we have our rollouts one had two pods terminating because this is the 25% step. And then we have two pods spinning up for the new rollout. Um, this was in the progression state, so if we run it one more time, we've probably given enough time to where now we're in a pause state. So we officially got to the pause state where we have 25%, in other words, two pods in Canary, and then we have six pods, the stable state of the old version. Um, so yeah, so this is what it should look like. And then what we can do is just take another look at what was created, similar to how we've been doing it before. We have our two replica sets that correspond to the two versions and the pods that are existing today. So now we're in a state where we're paused, and again, this is a manual pause, this is an indefinite pause that requires some manual interaction. Um, so what we can do, again, is use that, that kubectl plugin to promote it. Um, so we're going to do two commands here. We're going to use the kubectl plugin to do an actual rollout promote of the rollout that we care about. And then we're going to watch for how that, how that progresses. OK, yeah. So what's happening is we, we made it progress ourselves, and now we're getting to the 50% state where we have, and as you can see, I have the dash dash watch on this, so it's constantly updating. So we have four now of the canary and four of the stable. And so we're now paused again. If I get out of this. Now we're paused again, because we're at the pause step again. So we're going to go ahead and promote it again. But this time, we're going to use the rollouts dashboard to do that. Um, so we'll switch to terminal two. So at the top. There's a couple of tabs that we're going to be using throughout the lab. This time, we're going to switch to Terminal 2. You can also click this link here to take you there. Um, and then we're going to use that plugin again to run the dashboard command. Really, this is doing a port forward to the control plane pod. Um, so we're going to run that. You can ignore this error. And then this other tab here, Argo Rollets Dashboard, if you click on that, what should happen is that we see the rollouts dashboard now. And so we only have one rollout, but we can click into this to get some more detail. Um, you can see that, for example, it has the list of steps. Right now, we're currently in the pause step after the 50% wait, um, and it's waiting for promotion. So we can actually use the UI to do it this time. We're going to hit promote, and then yes, we're sure. And so you can see it's now in the 75% um, step. Two new pods just spun up. Two pods are spinning down. So now we're going to have six pods of yellow, two pods of blue. 
And then once these terminate, now we're in the pause step. This time it's a 10 second pause, so we're, you know, 10 seconds are gonna go by, and then this is actually gonna finish, promote, and we're gonna be at, now what is the canary is gonna be stable, the old version is gonna spin down, and then we're gonna be at kind of our, our standard healthy um, state for our rollout. Okay, so we're good. So let's go back to terminal one, and then what we'll do is get the status, uh, see the events. You know, the, we don't have to go through every single one, right? But this is similar to how we did with the deployment. The events on the resource will track what is happening. Um, okay, so what happens if things don't go wrong? How can the canary help us with that? So what we're gonna do now is do another promotion or another change that will this time set it to an image that says uh, bad dash purple. The demo app has images with the bad prefix that will randomly return errors. And so we're not gonna actually see too much of that here, but this is kind of, we're gonna use it later in the later labs. But basically know that this is representing a bad version where some bug was introduced. And so errors are gonna be returned when it should be returning the healthy response. So we're gonna make this update and we're gonna watch it as it updates. And so we see our new canaries kicking off for the new version. It's running and the old versions are, are terminating. Um, but again, this one has failures. We're not gonna see them just yet, but we'll see in this next lab. Um, so what we need to do is we need to roll back. So we can do that by using the abort, the abort command, uh, rollouts abort. So again, that's built into the, the plugin. And so this time we're gonna say, we need to abort, it's not great, we're gonna roll back. And then we're also gonna watch what happens as we do that. So we're in this degraded status now where this, this replica set was not great. Um, and so the new stuff, rather than pr promoting and going for beyond that, is terminating, we're scaling down the new version. Um, so we're now on back to the version two, the stable, but we're in this degraded state. So what we wanna do now is fix that degraded state where we're going to roll back to a version that we know is good and so what we're gonna do is run the command to do that. We're gonna set the image, this time to purple. We, made, we fixed the, the problem, and now we're deploying the new version. And we, we caught the fact that it was bad when only 25% of the users were exposed to it. So we, we, we built this new image, and it's working great that we think in development, so let's go ahead and push it out with the canary. And so we'll watch it again. So revision three was scaled down, but now revision four comes in with our fixed version and we can see it progress and run. So we, we fixed it, and now we're super confident that this new version's good. We don't wanna go through every single step, so we're gonna go ahead and do a full promotion to get it all the way to stable because we're that confident in it, and we can do that with another command, which will do um, the Argo Rollups Promote command that we've been using, but then we're adding this uh, full flag. Oh, that didn't look right this full flag at the end, which is saying basically skip all of the steps in the canary and go directly to uh, promote it completely. Um, I'm gonna not run that because it doesn't look right. But yeah, so you run that command and then now we're watching where we immediately went um, from the, we're, we're immediately jumping to the end of the rollout. And so you can see that as, as the canary got to healthy for all of the pods, now the pods from the, the stable are, are being terminated. Okay, so that's it for this lab. We're gonna go ahead and clean up our rollout before we move on. And then we're gonna do check and go to the next lab. So we saw a bunch of cool stuff with actual deployments, or the actual pods, right, the actual workload management, where we spun up new pods, we were able to rever uh, revert that, do it in a progressive manner, but we actually didn't see any traffic flow. So Argo Rollouts integrates with traffic providers, um, and we're gonna go to the slides and kind of talk about this a little bit. So aside from the, the, the workloads themselves, Rollouts can integrate with various mechanisms of traffic control. Um, it, can, it, it integrates with, directly with Kubernetes services, where you have services that select, you say you have a canary service and a stable service, those services will be updated with their selectors 
so that your canary service always points to the canary pods and the canary pods only, and stable points to stable only. Um, but it also integrates with service mesh and ingress con com components that allow you to basically integrate with the data plane of those providers to where rather than relying on something like just replica count, you can use the proxy of the, of the service mesh or of ingress to control you know, weighted routing without relying on replica count. You're basically telling Envoy or whatever, I want 75% to go here. You don't have to say I need 10 pods if I want to go in 10% increments. You can directly configure the, the data plane to do that. And with that, you also get some more advanced layer seven control. So for example, you can have header-based routing for a canary and so on. So this is a screenshot directly from the docs of the native providers for traffic control. You can see there's a pretty good list. Um, for this lab, we picked Istio. We're familiar with it. It has native integration with Argo rollouts. All of the traffic control, control features in Argo rollouts work with Istio. It's also CNCF graduated. The other nice thing about it is it has its own API, which is part of the native integration. It also has support for the gateway API, um, which we're gonna talk about later, so that comes in handy. And then there's also a rich set of metrics in Istio out of the box um, that we're gonna explore later as well. So kind of just quickly showing how, that work, how the service uh, stuff works. Again, we have our two stable service and canary service at the bottom. The, hat, the selector is not gonna be great because, again, the, the pods of the rollouts have that hash that corresponds to the revision. In the case of Argo rollouts, we need a stable and a canary selector. And what Argo rollouts can do is when you define which your, what your services are for traffic management, the Argo rollouts controller itself will modify your services to update the selector to include those hashes as they're, as they're needed. Um, so in this example right before, we were on revision one, and so we're at our stable place. Now the rollouts controller is gonna say, now for stable, here, are all the revision, here is only revision one, so that's the stable and the canary. Then when we're in a state where we're doing a canary and we're say we're at the 50-50 split, now the stable service only points to the, the pods that have the hash for the stable, and the canary service only points to the pods corresponding to the canary. And then when you do the promotion, now revision two is stable, now you're back where the stable and canary service select the pods of stable, which is all that's there. Then we, again, we can go a layer beyond that, which is integration with the traffic provider, in this case, Istio. Um, so right now we're in the state where we're 50-50. What Argo Rollouts can do is, at least with Istio, the virtual service is kind of the core routing concept in Istio. The implementation is not super important for what we're trying to, to show, but basically Argo Rollouts will integrate with Istio, configure the virtual service directly to control the route, the weighted routing, and then by doing that, now the Istio D, the control plane of Istio, will see that, and it will program its data plane to reflect that. So even though we're in a position where we have two pods stable, two pods um, canary, what we did is we modified the virtual service to, to update weighted routing. We can do something like where the stable is still getting 75%, but the canary is getting 25%, even though there's two pods each. So if you wanted to, you could do like 1%, right? Um, but it kind of, the, the power is that it allows you to use the, the features of your underlying traffic provider still integrated with your canary. Okay, so let's actually see that in action. So Argo Relative Traffic Control, you should be at a screen like this. And so, as I said, we're gonna use Istio. The first thing we need to do is install it. Um, Istio CTL is the tool for that. It's already on the VM. You can just go ahead and run this command to install it. Again, the specifics of Istio are not super important. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not super relevant um, because what we're trying to show is that the integration is what, what provides the power. Um, so we're gonna wait for that to install. Okay, and then we'll just do a quick check. In the Istio system namespace, we now have Istio D. Again, that's the control plane. And our ingress gateway, that's how we get traffic into wherever we need it to go. In our case, our demo app. So then this is gonna be a little bit of infrastructure stuff. Uh, we're using Metal LB on the VMs, or on the Kind cluster to give us load balancer service IPs. Um, this is just grabbing that IP so we can make requests to it. Um, so go ahead and run that, and then you have, you'll have that in the gateway address environment variable. Um, okay, so let's actually do some routing. So the first thing we're gonna do is create our services that correspond to our application. Um, we also output them. So we have a canary service and a stable service. 
and you'll see the selector has the basic app rollout demo, but the hash that corresponds to different revisions is not present. It's commented out because we, we don't know that. Argo Rollouts knows that. And Argo Rollouts is going to directly modify this selector to have the correct hash as we proceed through the canary. Um, so we have our services created. Then we're going to create our basic Istio routing. Again, the details aren't super important, but we'll quickly look at them. Um, we have a virtual service, which is that kind of core routing concept in Istio. Um, and what we have is a single route that's called primary, and there's two destinations. 100% go to the stable app, and 0% go to the Canary app. And then we have a gateway. It's not really relevant. Uh, it's basically just exposing it at the gateway. Um, OK, so if we were to hit access the app now, we would always go to the, the Canary, or always go to the stable app, because that's getting 100% of the traffic. Um, but to actually get some traffic, let's actually go ahead and apply a rollout, spin up our pods, and then we can use that as our back end. Um, so what we're going to do is apply a new manifest, but there's slight differences from what we did in the previous lab, so we're going to take a look at that. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that I just made it much simpler of a rollout because we don't care so much. We saw the steps and all that. In this case, we're only going to do a 25% wait and then an indefinite pause. The really interesting thing is that now in the Canary strategy, we have a Canary service defined, which corresponds to that service, and a stable service as well. And then we have our traffic routing section where we specify Istio. And then we're actually putting the virtual service and route name that we care about. And this is basically, so these lines are saying, I want Argo rollouts to, when you're doing the Canary, I want you to modify the Canary service name this, the stable service name this, and I'm going to use the Istio provider. And I want you to actually modify my virtual service that has this name and this specific route. The other thing is that now, since we're using a, a uh, what do you call it, a traffic provider, we're using Istio to manage our weighted routing, we actually don't need eight replicas to show it. We can even use one, and we can still do fine grain control. OK, so let's go ahead and just make sure that everything was created. Yes, but yes. OK, so what I'm showing here is that in the virtual service, if we look back at the strategy, we said virtual service named rollouts demo, routes primary. And then this is a subset of the virtual service that was applied to the cluster, where this, this route is named primary. So Argo rollouts is directly going to modify this section to control the weight as we proceed through the, the canary. So let's apply our rollout. And let's get the resources and everything. So we have our single pod, again, single replica. We have our replica set. And we have some Istio resources working or created and hopefully working. So now that we've created that, what will happen is the service selector should already have been updated. So what we just did, let me actually copy and paste that one. So what we're getting is the stable service from the cluster, and we're going to take a look at it. And if, if you look, there are a couple of things that have happened. So there's now this annotation that says managed by Argo rollouts. This signifies that this service has been modified and is now being controlled by Argo rollouts. And then the selector itself has this rollouts pod template hash with the hash that corresponds to the stable version. And we can kind of prove that by doing this command, where we are going to get the rollout. And we see that this, this revision is the 687. And we can see that our, our service selector was updated to have that as well. And then because this is the initial creation, both the canary and the stable are the same thing. We can kind of prove that that service selection was done. So both the canary and the stable have the same hash. OK, so let's go ahead and actually send some traffic to it. Um, we're making a request to that gateway address slash color. And we can see that it's responding with blue. So our endpoint is being routed to, and we're getting blue as our um, response. And then now what we're going to do is actually port forward. So we're going to actually try and access this application in the UI so we can actually see the colors and everything. So we're going to switch to Terminal 2 and run a port forward. This is like the way that Instruct is set up. We have to do this so we can access it. Like We're ac basically going to be accessing into the VM directly from an external uh, client, which is our browser. So we're running this port forward so that we can route to it. And then you can switch to this demo app tab, um, either by clicking on it or by using this link. And it's going to actually open up in a new window. 
and you should see something like this. And so since we're at blue, we only have one version. Everything is blue. So if we go back to our lab, we'll go back to terminal one, and now let's actually make some changes and see what happens. So now let's make a change, and we're gonna do this by applying the manifest rather than doing an imperative command to change the, the version. We're gonna apply a version that the only difference is from blue to yellow, so we'll apply it. And now there's a change. And so if you remember our step, the first step was go 25% to the new version. So if we go back to our demo app, what we should see is 20, roughly 25% is going to be yellow. So the rollout has progressed, it's a canary, we're 25%, and now we're at a place where we're manually paused waiting for interaction. But you can see that the, you know, there's 25% actually going to yellow, the rest of it, 75% going to blue, um, and we're doing that with one replica count. So we, we can look a little bit deeper, we can see the virtual service, and we can see that now that, that route that we were talking about actually has the 75-25 split that was made by the Argo Worlds controller directly modifying the virtual service to do that. Um, and then if we check the services, now we see that there are different hashes. The stable has the old one and Canary has the new one. And then lastly, we can, we can compare that from the rollout itself and see that the, the Canary has this hash, which matches our service, uh, our service selector here, and then the stable has this hash, which, which matches, matches here. Um, so it's paused, so let's go ahead and promote that to 100% by running the kind of commands that we've been seeing. Um, Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the watch and run the, just run that first command. Um, so we promoted it. We promoted it, so now we can go back to our UI and we promoted it to our new stable is yellow. And so now blue goes away, it's all yellow. And so we've done our canary, we, we did our testing or whatever, we confirmed that it looks good and now we're, we're purely riding to the new, the new stuff. Okay, and then one last advanced feature, um, again, with, with the traffic providers, we get extra stuff. One of them is header-based routing. So in this example, what we're gonna do is we're going to apply a new change to our uh, rollout. And now we're gonna have this manage routes section where we, we're defining a, another route name, which is canary-header. And then we have a step now after the 25% step to where what we wanna do is set the header route to, for this canary header, using that, using that name that we have up here, the managed route, what we wanna do is we wanna match based on a header of X rollout canary, and if the, if the value is true of that header on the request, that will route 100% to the canary. And so what we saw on the demo app is that it's all completely weighted, it's completely weight-based, where 75% traffic regardless is gonna go to the stable version, 25% to the canary. With this feature, we can know that 100% with that header will go to the canary, which allows us to do things like user testing or, or whatever we want to do without having to worry about, you know, 75% of the time I'm not going to hit the new, the new version. So if we apply that, and then we make sure that that is running. Yep, so we're at revision two. Um, we didn't actually make a change to the spec, so nothing actually kicked off. So we're gonna make an actual change that changes it to orange. And now what we can do is let's just make sure that we're paused on step two of three. So we set the weight, we set the header route, and now we're paused. If we go back to the demo app, we'll see yellow and orange, and we'll also be able to hit the canary 100% of the time with our header. So to prove that, let's first check the virtual service, and we'll see that the actual virtual service was modified to have this um, header match, where now X rollout canary with the true value, if, that's, if that is present, you go 100% of the time to the rollouts demo canary destination. Otherwise, you do the standard 75-25 uh, split. And we can, we can try that by doing a 10, we're gonna do 10 curls with the header present, and we're gonna see orange every time, regardless of the weighting. And then what we can do is run the same command without the header, and we should see a split of yellow and orange. So with the header present, 100%, that allows us to do whatever testing we need, um, and then otherwise you're gonna go through your standard weighted routing. Okay, so we're, we know we're good. Let's go ahead and promote it to its final state, and then we can check the app again, and now we're all orange. 
OK, so let's go ahead and do some cleanup, and then we're ready to go to the next lab. OK, so now we're going to talk about Gateway API. I'm going to hand it to Nina when she is available. And we're going to go back to the slides. Is this working? Cool. Okay, so now we've uh, seen how it used, well, it used to work, right? So um, every provider, like Istio, all the other gateways, would be, uh, you have to like write all that code to natively integrate it with Argo rollouts. Um, now with Gateway API, uh, I guess like first, like what is Gateway API? Um, in, uh, a couple years ago, uh, Gateway API was started as an official Kubernetes project in order to um, have one API for L4 and L7 routing across a lot of different uh, gateway providers. So this project kind of rep represents the next generation of the Kubernetes ingress, um, and it, it also um, works for um, you know, service meshes as part of the Gamma project. Um, so what it is, is you have a new set of custom resources um, that users use to define the gateway uh, functionality. So this is straight from the gateway API uh, docs. They have a great little diagram here that kind of highlights like the different um, components that make up the API. So the first one we're going to look at is the gateway class, which defines a set of gateways with common configuration behavior. Um, so that's like what controller you're using to actually um, uh, set up your gateway. And then the gateway itself is the point where traffic can be translated um, to services. So that's like your ingress gateway, the actual um, service and deployment that, that gets configured based on how the controller is configuring it. And then the routes. So the routes, uh, there's multiple routes that are supported, HTTP routes, TLS route, gRPC route. Um, in this lab, we're only going to focus on the HTTP routes, but others exist. So it's good to call out. OK, so we're going to jump into the next lab. Um, so in this lab, um, we're, the first step we have to do is install the gateway API CRDs because they don't come installed default in Kubernetes. Um, so I have a little command to apply um, the installation script from the um, gateway's uh, Kubernetes SIG. Um, so this is just going to apply all the CRs that we just talked about. So the gateway class, the gateways, the HTTP route, and uh, reference grants, which we're not really going to use in this uh, example. And then we're going to go back to Istio. So Lawrence mentioned a while back that Istio supports both like the native Istio virtual service APIs, but it also supports gateway API. So um, just to sanity check, we still have Istio installed. We still have our old ingress gateway. And we still have the Istio control plane. Um, but now we're going to create a new gateway with this new API. Um, so uh, when we applied the CRDs, something also happened magically under the hood. Um, Istio created these uh, gateway classes for us, which is very nice, um, 37 sec seven seconds ago. So before the CRDs were applied, we didn't have any gateway classes. But um, Istio actually, like once those um, CRs are present, will create the gateway class for you. And there's two um, gateway classes that we have. We're actually just going to use the Istio one. Uh, the Istio remote is for things that the Istio control plane doesn't manage. The gateway we're going to use is going to be managed by the Istio control plane, so we'll use that. Um, cool. And then now for the actual gateway. So this is, uh, again, a gateway that's not specific to Istio. It's coming from the gateway um, API. And what we're doing is we're selecting the gateway class Istio, which we saw Istio created for us. Um, naming this gateway gateway in the default namespace and creating a listener for it. So our gateway is going to listen on port 80, and that's what we're going to use from now on to, to send traffic um, to instead of the, the old ingress gateway. So let's apply that config. And let's see if we actually got one. So yeah, so when we look at the deployments, we get um, our gateway Istio deployment um, is, is in a ready state, so we can start using it. So now we're going to set up some environment variables just to make it easy to send requests. 
um, like we did before. Um, so we're gonna make like our, uh, as we looked, uh, saw in, uh, from the deployment, um, we have our gateway in the default namespace. So we're gonna set the, our gateway namespace as default and then get the address from the, the load balancer um, that uh, our uh, Istio control plane created for us. Cool, okay, so now let's actually do some routing. So before when we had our virtual service, um, the Istio control plane would take that virtual service and configure the gateway. Now we will see that it can actually do the same thing with uh, gateway API resources, so the HTTP route. So this is um, an equivalent version of the virtual service we saw, just written in the gateway API format. So um, we're selecting the gateway that we just created. It's named gateway. Um, this HTTP route is also in the default namespace, so it's gonna be able to pick that up. Um, and then um, we have our backend ref um, to uh, select the two Kubernetes services that we, we've been using throughout the, the uh, labs. So our demo stable and our demo canary are both uh, two backend refs that we have. So we're, like, we're gonna see that Argo is gonna configure the weights for both of these later on. Cool, okay, so let's, uh, I think I didn't apply it, let's run that. And then let's send some traffic. So using the gateway address that we set earlier, we're gonna send a request. Oh, did I? I missed the stuff, let's see. Oh, it didn't configure it. Um, let's see, what did I miss? Oh, I didn't create the services. Ah, right, so in the previous lab, we cleaned everything up, so in order to actually you know, hit the services, we, we have to recreate them. So now my, uh, my config should work. Sorry, that, this one. Cool, so when I send the request, um, I can send it again, I get a nice response, blue. So we're going through our new ingress gateway and hitting our, our service. Um, let's take a look at what that looks like in the demo app one more time. So it should look identical to what we saw before. Um, oh, sorry, the demo app, yeah. So we can see that all the colors we're getting back are blue and we're routing again through that, that new gateway. Um, so next, um, we're gonna kill that port forward, and we're gonna look at some of the other features that Gateway API provides. So um, one thing that you can do with Gateway API is URL rewrites. So this is just like a silly example to play around with uh, to get familiar with the Gateway API. So what we're gonna do is replace our color uh, um, prefix with our favorite color. So um, every time we're gonna use the favorite color uh, um, path, we're gonna actually hit the color path. So um, our ingress gateway is gonna replace favorite color with color, and then we're gonna still get the, the same response that we were seeing before. So let's apply that. And then when we take, uh, send the request again, you can see that even though I'm using the favorite color, it's actually getting back the, the color response we were seeing. So it did do that, that flip. Um, cool, and then, um, the next task is actually an advanced task, so we don't have the, the solution for you. Um, you'll have to, uh, how are we on time? Um, actually, I might just run through it, uh, just because I think we, we wanna get through a couple more labs. Um, but our next task is we're gonna create an HTTP header with the Gateway API. So similar to how we did the URL um, rewrite, we're gonna add another filter to do um, a uh, response header. So when we get our response back, on like our ingress ga gateway will add a um, response header with X location Salt Lake City. So the way we're gonna do that is I actually have um, the lab preset. So uh, yeah, Argo header. So let's take a look. Um, so very similar to what we had before. Let me make this a little bigger. Um, we have the URL write, uh, rewrite as one of the filters, and we have this new filter um, called the response header. So um, the response header modifier is going to add a, um, a header on the response that adds the name X location and value Salt Lake City. So when I apply this config, and then send the same request as before. Um, where's the, um, now I should see that I uh, got, 
yes, my location is now, um, I have an, an additional header on the response for Salt Lake City. Cool, okay, so we've played around with the Gateway API a little, so we're gonna clean everything up and then move on to the next step. So now um, we're gonna look at how Argo works with Gateway API. So um, before we do that, I have a couple slides to, to go through. Um, so first of all, um, unlike the Istio virtual service, which was natively integrated with Argo, um, Gateway API's uh, support today is a plugin, so you'll have to define a config map um, that uh, Argo rollouts will um, reference and then uh, be able to get that plugin and uh, you'll, you'll have to restart Ar Argo rollout to actually pick it up. Um, but once you actually do that, all providers that support Gateway API will work with Argo. So um, Istio, um, we'll look at Nginx, we'll look at Envoy Gateway, we'll look at Glue Gateway, all of those will work without any changes. Um, there is a issue to um, add entry support um, for Gateway APIs, but um, it's still a work in progress. Um, one of our coworkers actually opened it, so um, if you want, you can take a look um, at that uh, on the Argo GitHub page. But another thing we'll have to do is also define the cluster role. So um, before, when the virtual service was natively integrated, uh, the RBAC was defined for you. Um, here, we'll have to define a cluster role um, to give Argo permissions to edit the HTTP routes. Cool, and then this is kind of the, the setup that we had before, so we had our virtual service. The only thing that's gonna change is we're gonna use an HTTP route instead. Okay, so back to the lab. Um, okay, so uh, like I mentioned, the first thing we have to do is um, uh, upgrade uh, Argo with Helm um, to actually um, add the, the new plugin that, that we're gonna use. So um, we, are, we do a Helm upgrade with um, Helm upgrade install and add this new controller for the traffic router plugins. The second thing we need to do is add uh, the config map. So um, we have to um, add this new config map that is going to uh, reference the traffic router plugins and then have a location to um, the, the actual plugin. So we're gonna apply that and replace the, the existing config map. And then now in order to have the changes take effect, we're gonna restart uh, Argo. So we restarted Argo rollouts. And now um, last little bit, we have to create the cluster role and the cluster role binding to be able to edit our HTTP uh, uh, route. So um, the, the, this is the same cluster role that we looked at on the slides. We're gonna give Argo permissions to edit HTTP routes um, and you know, update and patch. So, so we're gonna apply that. And then finally, we need the cluster role binding. So this is going to um, associate our cluster role with um, you know, our, our subject. So in this case, uh, the Argo service account. So um, this is the, the cluster role we just defined, and then this is the Argo service account we're using. So we're gonna apply that config. And then uh, now we're actually ready to, to do the, the rollout for real. So, um, uh, where, where are we? Yeah, so um, again, we're gonna have to reapply the services in HTTP route that we were using before for the, the basic routing. Um, and then let's look at the HTTP route that was created. So, um, you can notice that the status has been updated by Istio. So, the route is valid, it resolved all the, the references, and the controller that's um, configuring it is Istio. And then uh, currently we just have two backend refs, um, like in the example we were using before, one for the demo stable and one for the demo canary. Cool, so um, next uh, we're going to create the actual rollout resource. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So um, what's a little different here is in the uh, traffic routing plugins, we're now using the gateway API instead of Istio. And this is gonna be a very simple uh, rollout, similar to what we did before, um, where we're, the pauses are just gonna be 30 seconds, um, no like manual intervention to, to get it out. Cool, so let's apply that. And then now let's uh, monitor what's happening. So um, we, again, like if you look at the uh, selector under the service, you'll see that um, 
the uh, selector has that um, app uh, template hash uh, updated like we were looking at before, so it's working exactly the same. The only thing that changed is the, the routing resource we're using is no longer a virtual service, it's that HTTP route. Um, and then if you look at the status, um, we, you know, uh, because this is the first rollout we're doing, um, we uh, already are at step 6.6 six, and everything's in a healthy state. Cool, so um, now the last thing we're gonna do is send some traffic. So uh, I'm just gonna run this command to send a bunch of curl requests uh, through the ingress gateway that, that we select. Um, and you should only see green responses because that's the only image we currently have. And then if you wanna take a look at the, um, the demo UI, we can go to terminal two, and then again, port forward our, um, our Istio uh, gateway and take a look at what it looks like. So again, we see a bunch of only green um, uh, versions uh, on the, the demo UI as well. Cool, so now we're gonna go do a canary upgrade, this time with HTTP routes. So um, we're, uh, the only difference that we're gonna do is um, instead of having green, we're gonna switch to orange. So um, when we uh, apply this, um, we should see uh, the, the status um, here have both the green and the orange version, and um, as you update it, it should uh, um, update the steps as well. So um, now if we take a look at our HTTP route, we can see what stage we're on. So we are on um, the 70-30 stage, so 70% of our, our, our traffic is going to the stable app, and then 30% of our traffic is going to the canary. And this is, our, again, like similar to how we saw the virtual service get updated, Argo is doing the same exact thing, it's just updating a different resource, the HTTP route. Cool, so um, now let's keep going. Um, so if you send some uh, traffic, we can see a mix of green and orange responses. Um, so before when we only saw green, now we're seeing green and orange. And, um, when we promote this uh, a couple times, you can see that the, it's actually better to visualize in the UI, um, you can see that the percentage is going to uh, change over time. So before it was 30, 70, now um, I think it's what, uh, the next stage. And then if we promote it one more time, um, we will see uh, it upgrade again. So we are, yeah, so we're still on stage three out of six. Um, if we promote it uh, one more time, we're gonna see it be all orange. So where's the, the promote? So I run promote again. I'm in stage, uh, where is it at? Oh, it's not, oh, wait, this is the wrong. Uh, so if I reload it, so now everything is orange. Um, I can run the state again to, to check what state we're in. So now we are, are in uh, the last state. So the only uh, thing we have is orange in the stable state. And if we promote it one more time, um, only orange will be here, as, uh, uh, or only orange will be in the, the status. So we can see that we only have orange here. Cool. Um, so at the very end, our HTTP route, all of the traffic is going to the new stable, the new orange. All right, so now let's take a look at what happens when uh, things go, uh, oh, actually, let's take a look at the, um, the Argo rollouts UI, just to confirm that it's identical to what we were looking at before. Um, sorry, not this one, the, this one. So when we port forward the dashboard, oh, it's very hard to see here. Uh, we can see that this is, again, the same, um, like, even though the HTTP route, it, it, the virtual service switched to the HTTP route, the dashboard looks the same. Um, so everything works as before. Cool, and then the last task that we have is defining uh, a route for early adopt, uh, adoption traffic. So it's similar to what we did before, um, we're going to have uh, an extra header on our HTTP route that's going to send, um, if you have this header, all the traffic to the newer version. Um, and um, again, just because of time, I'm gonna do this um, for you, but um, if you, you know, want to um, 
uh, try it out on your own, feel free, I'll, I'll keep the config up and you can uh, follow along. So um, in our labs, I have the config already set. So uh, canary roll out with header. Okay, so um, the thing that we have to change in order to get this to work is very similar to what we did before with the virtual service. Um, now, under traffic manage, uh, under traffic routing, we have managed routes where we define our uh, canary header name, and then under the steps, we say what we're matching on. So, if the um, x rollout canary uh, header equals true, um, it's going to send all the traffic to the, the canary. So, let's apply that config. And then um, let's send some traffic. So I'm gonna send the traffic with the X uh, rollout canary header and then see what color I get. Oh, uh, sorry, wrong, wrong terminal. <laughs> um, so again, because we didn't set our end, this is why we're not uh, being able to, uh, to hit the gateway. If we go back to terminal one, uh, the end is correctly set and you can see 100% of the traffic is going to green. Cool, so the last thing we're gonna do is do a little bit of cleanup and then um, we're gonna move on to the next section on metrics. So Istio um, is nice because it, it uh, provides metrics for you. So if we're sending traffic through the ingress gateway, um, it'll collect the total number of requests and we'll be able to use that to see if our uh, Argo rollout um, can automatically proceed. Um, cool, so I'm gonna go through this next section uh, now. So we're gonna install Prometheus. Um, because we're going to use Prometheus as our metrics uh, collection to um, uh, to be able to, to run queries and see um, what our, our metrics are reporting. Um, actually, I think I have a slide to, to demonstrate this. So um, again, there's a, a, like we're going to use Prometheus, but there's other um, metrics integrations that Argo rollouts uh, provides. So you can use like Datadog, you can use New Relic, um, you can use Kubernetes Jobs, which Again, foreshadowing we might later in the, in the, the labs. Um, and in order to get the metrics integration to work to automatically do that rollback, um, we'll need to create uh, an analysis template. So this is another custom resource that Argo has um, that's going to define what metrics are our success criteria. Um, so the analysis template is going to create an analysis run, and that analysis run is going to query our metrics provider um, to, to get metrics on, on the state of our uh, Canary deployment. Um, in our specific case, again, we have Istio with the HTTP route, and then uh, our metrics provider is gonna be uh, Prometheus. Um, and then when we do, when the metrics aren't happy, so when we get um, you know, the Istio request total uh, response codes, um, you know, aren't, uh, we're not getting 200s back, um, we can automatically roll back without manual intervention. So before, when we had to like, see the, um, the state and like automatically roll back, uh, manually roll back. Now, uh, based on our metrics criteria, we can do that automatically. Cool, so then I'll, I'll go back to the lab. Um, so um, now uh, Prometheus should be installed. So if I check uh, the status of the deployment, it, it has been uh, installed. And I can run the Istio dashboard Prometheus command to port forward Prometheus and see the UI just to run some, some simple queries. seems to be slow. Well, we can talk about the queries because I, I do want to get to the next section. So, um, so uh, I'm going to apply the services and rollouts um, that, that we had, that we've been using for the, the last previous labs. Um, and then, um, is Prometheus up yet? Timeout occurred. Okay, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the, the queries briefly, but um, if it, like, uh, it, it like, basically looks like a, a nice version of this where you can type in the query and, like, see it execute. Um, but the two queries we're gonna run are, um, the first one is just to get the uh, request total. So um, Istio, the ingress gateway, is reporting on all the requests going through it. So um, we have a lot of useful information we can use to do a, a, in our, uh, to, to build our analysis template with. 
Um, so um, in uh, our case, we're going to look at the response code and see what percentage of the response code is um, you know, healthy versus uh, 500 uh, requests, uh, responses. Um, so um, unfortunately, yeah, it looks like Prometheus isn't working for me. Um, so I'm going to skip those sections, but at least the dashboard isn't. Um, but it is installed, so it should be in a running state. Um, so uh, I'm going to skip the, the error rate um, and then move on to the analysis template also for timing. Um, so in the analysis template, um, this is, again, the, the resource that we're going to use to write our query um, to determine automatically when um, we're good to you know, progress versus we, when we should roll back. Um, so in this case, the query we're doing is the percentage of um, uh, non-500 responses versus total responses, and we want that percentage to be higher than 95. So when I apply uh, that template, um, I've created the analysis template, but now I need a rollout that is going to select that analysis template. So um, in our rollout, um, we're going to, uh, this again, very similar to the rollouts that we were using before, but um, we're going to have a new analysis section where we define, uh, we select our analysis template and uh, provide the arguments we're gonna use for it. So in this case, our template was called Istio success rate, and the args we're going to provide are our uh, demo canary service. So that's the, the metric it's going to look for, how many th um, requests going to the demo canary service are in a good state. So um, I'm going to go to terminal two and send a bunch of traffic so I get some metrics. And then um, uh, I'm going to deploy my rollout. So um, when I deploy my rollout, an analysis run will automatically get created. So my analysis run is now running. And um, when I look at the rollouts themselves, I can see that the rollout is in progress. So th there's a new section in this report that says analysis run, which uh, it, it corresponds to the analysis run that we looked at earlier. Cool, okay, so then uh, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, check if our analysis run was successful. So it's uh, still in a running state. Um, I think it usually takes a little bit to, to get done. Um, so we'll, we'll give it some time. We can describe the analysis run while we're waiting. So it's still in the running state. It's still, there's been um, uh, run summary one, so we've had one successful run, um, but we're still waiting for the, the other run. Um, actually, in the meantime, I'm gonna pull up the, um, yeah, uh, well, let's, let's check, it's still running. So we'll actually, we'll look at it in the UI to, um, while, while it's still running. So um, uh, do I have, actually, I, yeah, I don't think I have, okay. Hopefully it's done now. Nope, still running. <laughs> so, okay, successful, finally. Um, so now uh, our, like we didn't have to do anything. Our analysis template, kind of confirmed that everything looked good automatically um, by using that query. And now when we send our traffic, oh, again, sorry, wrong URL, uh, missing, I forgot this at the end. Of, um, now when I set, uh, send the, URL, uh, the, the request, all of our traffic is going to the new uh, uh, version, the, the purple version, and 100% of our traffic is, is coming back like that. Cool, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, Actually, we're, we're short on time, so the, I'm gonna just briefly talk about the, um, the bad version. So similar to um, like if the metric wasn't correct, right? so it would automatically roll back. So similar to how we did the rollback manually, um, the bad metric would um, like return the analysis uh, run to, to have failed, and then um, we uh, like would see the, the, the version roll back to the original stable. But, um, I wanna move on to the next section for picking uh, gateway API providers because we've been using Istio this whole time, but there are other providers. So um, in uh, like the next lab, um, which feel free to, to do also like after the session um, and explore more, um, the like Istio is one of the many 
providers that um, implement Gateway API. Um, so Gateway API lets you pick whatever provider you want and use the same APIs. So we'll be able to switch our gateway to another gateway without having to um, change the underlying like routing uh, resources, um, which is really cool because it also integrates with Argo. So you kind of get both the routing and the, the Argo integration for free. Um, Great, okay, so there's three providers that we have. Um, if you're interested in learning more, like testing out other providers, I've included a link um, to the full list. Um, so feel free to, to explore that as well. Um, I'm gonna go with Glue Gateway because that's the gateway I've worked on. Um, so I'm gonna install it now. Um, so in order to install Glue Gateway, um, you need to first add the Helm chart and then uh, run the, the Helm install command. So we're gonna run that. Might take a second. And in this Helm command, um, there's a couple uh, values set by, by like uh, manually, um, just to make it uh, like a simpler installation. So um, we support discovery um, of not just Kubernetes services, but other services as well, like Open API and Swagger. Um, but for this example, we're only using Kubernetes services, so we're gonna turn that off. Um, we're also disabling the, the default proxy just to only like show that we're manually creating the, the gateway. And uh, we're disabling leader election again, just for a simpler installation. Cool, so our Helm installation worked. Um, we can view the, um, the gateway class. So similar to like Istio, uh, Glue creates the gateway class for you. So you can see that we have a controller for the Glue gateway already installed. And then um, if uh, the next thing we have to do is similar to Istio, apply a gateway resource. So, um, we're, the only thing we're gonna change, like it's very similar to what we were using before, um, but the gateway class name is now gonna match our new gateway controller. And this is again the same for like Nginx and Envoy Gateway, like um, this gateway is gonna be identical except the controller. So let's apply that. So we're actually we're gonna replace the, the existing Istio one. And then once we replace it, let's take a look at the state of the world. So it's gonna take a second to get up. So our, our new Glue gateway, gateway is up and ready. Um, cool, so now let's set the environment variables for that gateway. And then um, switch to terminal two and port forward uh, our gateway and take a look at the, the UI. And we can see that our uh, traffic is now going through the new gateway that we just kind of swapped in and uh, still working. All right, I think we're, we're short on time, so I'm just gonna briefly talk about the next section. Um, and again, feel free to do it uh, on, on your own. Um, so in, like, the problem with having a lot of providers is although the routing API is the same, the metrics they provide aren't. So um, in the next section, uh, this lets you walk through uh, an automatic rollout with a Kubernetes job. So um, we, it uses the work, um, uh, HTTP uh, benchmark um, live, like, um, project to uh, just send a bunch of requests to the Canary service and see what the responses are. Um, and this is generic across um, all of the providers because it's hitting the, uh, like it's running you know, metrics on the Canary service directly instead of the gateway. Um, you can use the, the metrics that the gateway offers. It's just that they're not generic for any solution and this approach was. Um, so that's the reason we decided to go for Kubernetes um, job. Um, the only thing that changes in this setup is the analysis template. So the analysis template we're gonna use and now uses a provider job instead. Um, but the, um, the result is very similar. So once you apply the analysis template, it's gonna create an analysis run um, with your rollout. And then based on that analysis run, it'll either um, you know, promote the canary or roll back to the, the older version. Cool, so I know we're almost at time. Um, I, I guess uh, in I wanna make sure that we have some time for uh, a recap. So uh, in today's lab, we kind of touched on a lot of things, starting from Kubernetes deployments to basic Argo rollouts to um, you know, Istio with virtual services and doing our Argo rollouts with that to Gateway API with Istio to is a gateway API with any provider you want. Um, and uh, I, I know there was a lot of stuff to cover. Um, 
I think the lab will be available a, a, for a little while longer if you want to keep going um, or you know uh, try it out later. Um, but yeah, did I? You want to add anything, Lawrence? Uh, no, it was a great job. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So we we have our, our QR code. Um, if you give us feedback. Um, and you like the lab, um, we might also make it available like through our website or uh, like you know, our, our run workshops. Um, and yeah, thanks. We'll be around for any questions too um, if you have anything you want to ask. And the, the lab will, will still be up, so if you're still working through it, we'll walk around and, and uh, do that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>